Is the World Cup trophy solid gold? Do the winners keep it? Will the next World Cup trophy have a new design? You will find out all about it in this video. But first, let's go back to where it all started with the original design. The first ever trophy was designed by French sculptor Abel Lafleur. The trophy was 14 inches long and weighed 3.8 kilograms. It was based on the Greek goddess of victory, Nike of Samothrace, and was made of gold-plated sterling silver with a blue base of semi-precious stone holding a cup on her head. So if you didn't already, you now know where Nike got its name from. Speaking of names, you may never have heard this one before, but without him, there may have never even been a World Cup tournament in the first place. Jules Rimet was the FIFA president for 33 years, and he's the one who came up with this brilliant tournament idea. On the 28th of May, 1928, Rimet proposed the idea of an independent FIFA World Cup tournament at the 17th FIFA Congress in Amsterdam. In 1930, the first World Cup tournament was held in Montevideo, and the rest is history. But what does he have to do with the trophy itself? Well, it's actually named after him. That's why it was called the Jules Rimet Trophy. But a few years after the first tournament, something happened that almost ended the World Cup for good. It was actually only nine years after the first ever World Cup. I think we all know what happened in 1939, right? If you don't, you were probably like me and didn't listen to anything being said at school, but come on, this is important. It's the start of World War II. The war wreaked havoc on absolutely everything in the world, especially the World Cup. The tournament was suspended for years and years while the war was going on. Germany hadn't won the World Cup yet, but the Nazis wanted to get their hands on the trophy and weren't ready to put up a fight on the field. So they just decided to go and grab it. The trophy was being kept in the vault of a Roman bank, but obviously it wasn't safe anymore. So Ottorino Barassi, who was the FIFA president at the time, went to go get the trophy. Now, you would think that he'd hide it in a brilliant, very well-secured place with 24-hour surveillance, right? Well, Ottorino had other ideas and decided to hide it in a shoebox under his bed until the war was over. Very smart, if you ask me. Who in the world would think to look there? Maybe the trophy should have stayed under his bed forever because only a few years later it was successfully stolen. But the best part about this story is how they ended up finding it back. The year is 1966. The World Cup trophy is being stored in England ahead of the next tournament. The trophy was put on display at the Central Hall in Westminster. But maybe they should have stated on the protective glass for public viewing, not for public taking, because the trophy was stolen just two days after it was initially put on display. And this wasn't some well-organized heist by professional robbers, not at all. According to reports, the security guards went on a break and didn't check if their replacements had arrived. And that's when the thieves just came in and took the trophy. It came out one of the security guards was 74 years old or something. The security was quite inadequate. We think two people broke in through an emergency exit, took the trophy and walked out again. This was a quote by Dr. Martin Atherton, who wrote a whole book about the incident. Yikes. The thief was arrested, but the trophy was still nowhere to be found. Until one man, called David Corbett, decided to take his dog, Pickles, on a walk one evening. On that day, Pickles the dog became an international hero, along with his owner, because Pickles led his owner right to the World Cup trophy. Yes, some random dog named Pickles found it before the police. Embarrassing! But hey, David Corbett was given $6,000 and Pickles got a lifetime supply of food. If I was David, I'd probably have asked for a lifetime supply of food as well, but whatever. After this incident, the English started displaying a replica trophy at their exhibitions. FIFA wasn't too happy with this and forced them to take it down. And so, in 1997, the replica was auctioned off to a very wealthy buyer who paid a whopping $254,000 for a fake trophy. Who in the world would have that much money to spend on this replica? Surprise, surprise, it was FIFA. That's a lot of money for a replica of a trophy that you own. 
People believe that it must have been the real trophy because there is no way they would have paid a quarter million dollars for a fake. But I guess we'll never know. Brazil, on the other hand, was able to keep the trophy forever. Yeah, you heard that right. Still to this day, the Brazilian national team owns an official World Cup trophy. Or do they? How? Well, Brazil won the World Cup in 1970. It was their third win in a row. Only Brazil could do that. And Jules Rimet had made it a rule back in 1930 that a country that wins three consecutive tournaments would get to keep the trophy forever. Brazil took the trophy home and stored it in a bulletproof glass cabinet at the Brazilian Football Confederation's headquarters in Rio de Janeiro. But what happened next will shock you. Once again, it got stolen. Brazil was able to keep the trophy safe for quite some time, but 13 years later, just as the cup was about to hit puberty, it was stolen. Turns out the bulletproof glass it was once held in was absolutely useless because the thieves didn't need to use a gun. Why would you shoot a bullet and draw attention to yourselves anyway? Thankfully, they ended up catching the four men who did it and convicted them of the theft, but the trophy was never to be found again. According to most people, the thieves melted the trophy and sold the gold, which is incredibly dumb if you ask me. They could have gotten so much more money if they sold it as it was, but hey, I've never stolen a trophy and traded it on the black market, so what do I know? Anyway, the Brazilian Football Confederation ended up making a replica of the trophy and presented it to the Brazilian president as a gift. But what a shame. The only country in the world who was allowed to keep the trophy and they got it stolen. Maybe they should have flown pickles out to Brazil and things would have been different. While Brazil was losing and remaking their trophy, FIFA didn't really care as they knew this trophy was old news already. You see, after giving the trophy to Brazil, FIFA had to make a new World Cup trophy for 1974. They decided to go with a brand new design. Sculptors from all around the world submitted their samples. They got over 50 unique submissions and decided to go with the one from Silvio Gazzaniga, a very talented Italian sculptor. He's the man who made the World Cup trophy we still use to this day. The trophy is 14.4 inches tall and is made out of over 30,000 carats of gold. It's worth about $250,000 with the current rate of gold, but who knows what some people in the world will be ready to pay to get their hands on the trophy. I'm looking at you, Qatar. But anyways, back in the day, the country that won the World Cup was actually allowed to keep the trophy until the next tournament. But the rules have changed now. They no longer take the original home. Instead, they are giving a gold-plated replica while the original trophy stays at the FIFA Museum in Zurich, Switzerland. It only sees the outside world two times every four years, at the opening ceremony and during the final, of course. But what's the truth about this trophy? Is it actually made out of solid gold or is it simply covered in it? I've always wondered. And now that I know the answer, I must say it's quite logical. It's hollow. Well, kind of. The earth at the top of it is. You know why? Well, according to Martin Polyakov, it's because otherwise the trophy would weigh in at just over 70 kilos or 150 pounds. So except maybe Zlatan, who the hell would be able to lift it above his head after playing 90 minutes to win it in the first place? Also, why would they waste so much gold to make the entire planet solid when they could just make it hollow and save a shit ton of money? Especially since this may be the very last World Cup where we see this trophy. Yes, you heard that right. This trophy is about to be gone in a few years and I doubt you'll be able to predict why they're looking to change it. The current trophy has been used for about 48 years now, but age isn't even really the problem. The main reason is because of the base of the trophy. You see, every time a team wins the trophy, their names and the year they won are inscribed on the base of the original trophy. Sure, this is a great idea. It adds a lot of character to the trophy, but the problem is there is not much space left. So who knows when they're going to present the new design, but they better hurry, otherwise they'll probably have to use a Sharpie to write the winner's name. To be honest, I'd find it hilarious, but it doesn't really fit FIFA's style now, does it? Thanks for watching guys and watch this video on screen now. I picked it out just for you.